I talk about this topic uh, fairly frequently, but um, I think it's uh, always nice to kind of uh, rediscuss this point. How do I stop hating myself? It's a very big question because um, I think the asking of the question itself is fairly important. Why? Because um, I think people generally have a lot of self-critical tendencies, but when you're very deep in, into self-criticism, it's very difficult to even be aware that you are participating in it, right? So the fact that you have this question, how do I stop hating myself, means that you're at least out of that pool right now. There's like this body of water, and when, when you go in it, you ha hate yourself, but then you're out of it now and you're looking at that water and I'm like whoa I've been there and when I was in there I was hating myself and now how do I not go back right so uh, to be completely honest with you after you've had the, these types of awakenings all you have to do is not get into that water right um, so although the you know water and the coming out of the water is a metaphor once you really understand this inside once this like concept actually integrates into your body and you see the pointlessness of self-criticism now then you know you just don't get you just don't enter the water you just look somewhere else right but we all have different tendencies and we all have habits and we all have different reasons for participating in this uh, cycle of self-criticism and self-hatred. So, um, well, I can always explain this in multiple different ways, but today I want to explain it a little bit um, like this. Number one, it's a basically kind of a, a dichotomy, right? I'm broadly categorizing the self-hatred into two buckets. Number one is... Uh, are you actually is there some life event or are there some life events in your life that you could remove your from your life and then you'll feel better and you won't hate yourself so much if that's the case those events need to be examined if you find that, you know what, no matter what I do, um, no matter what events I, you know, add or remove into my life, I'm always going to hate myself. Then it's kind of a life outlook kind of a problem, right? So this uh, question at least helps you a little bit self-diagnose where the self-criticism might be coming into, right? And so quickly discussing the first question first. There are some things I can undo in my life and then I'll feel a lot better. That means um, you have a lot of regrets and that means there are uh, there were a lot of things at stake for you and then you messed up really bad. And um, that means something inside of here is a wound and something um, in your psyche treats this as like a bad event. It's a traumatic incident, right? So... Of course, this is a YouTube video. I can't understand all the, you know, um, specifics about your life and why you are contemplating this today. But at the same time, I've worked with enough people and studied all of this enough to know that basically I don't need to drink all the water in the Pacific Ocean to know that it is salty, right? So in general, the direction where you want to take yourself is you need a mantra. Right? And I'm not saying this as like you need a religion, but you're in, you're, what you need to consistently drill into your head is nothing happened. Um, you don't remember what you ate for lunch like uh, a month ago, right? You don't remember um, how you slept like two years ago. Those things happened, yes? You did eat and you did sleep, right? But it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's something that just like is so mundane and um, uneventful that it just like you don't even remember. But it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. And that's what I mean by nothing happened. So yes, something happened, right? Like uh, these things that, that 
th these really big things, these really bad things happen to make my life feel really bad. And I need to, I need you to employ the perspective that, but those are all things that could have happened. You know, as long as I'm alive, um, I can die. As long as I'm awake, I can sleep. As long as I have glasses, they can be broken. As long as I have eyes, I can go blind. As long as I have a tongue, it can be cut. Um, but nothing's out of the ordinary. Nothing bad happened. It's just uh, something that could have happened, happened. I have a body, so I get hungry. So I ate. So in the grand scheme of things, um, you know what? Yeah, I thought this was really bad. I thought this was like an, uh, 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 kind of a life or death kind of a thing. And it was a really bad, dire situation. But you know what? It's not. That's the perspective that will ultimately uh, sort of liberate you from the problems that come from having really bad life events. Now, again, I need to remind you that uh, this is kind of a generalization and your life may have specific contexts that make it difficult for you to believe this, right? And that's what like individual coaching is for. But because I'm talking to you kind of asynchronously, I want to give you the general picture. So second type is uh, there's nothing you can do, right? And there's nothing you can do, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing I can add to my life, there's nothing I can remove from my life for me to stop hating myself. And uh, excellent callback to the book, uh, Little Life, by the way. But when you have that, um, the again, there's lots of other possibilities, but I don't wanna stop at just like, so it depends. I wanna give you at least one concrete thing, right? And the concrete thing is that this generally tends to happen when you have very high expectations of yourself. Why? Because high expectations are a double-edged sword. And now usually this means like it's very aggressive and it has a lot of potential, but it can harm yourself, right? But this is a little special case. High expectations is just all bad, I think. Um, it just cuts you both ways. So high expectation, why is that bad? Because number one, um, it makes your current reality a really shitty place to be in. Why? Because the higher one is so much better. The expectation and the potential that you have is so much better in comparison to your reality, right? But the reality is the one that you actually participate and live in. So just because, just by having a high expectation, your, your reality just fucking sucks. And now the second part is um, when you have high expectations, everything that you do is high pressure. And everything that you do is high stress. Because why? The stakes are too high. You have too much to lose and you have too much to gain. So now all, all the things that you would ordinarily do, now there's so much pressure, right? Like, uh, you know, the cooking shows, like the participants in the cooking show. I remember um, watching like a cooking competition with my wife on TV. And you know, sometimes they get really like bad feedback from the, you know, Gordon Ramsay or something like that, right? And now I'm, I'm asking my wife, do you think that's like the food that they made and they just got really super criticized for? Do you think that's actually like inedible? Or do you think it's just like not up to that standard of like really, really delicious dish? And my wife was like, it's probably inedible, right? It probably tastes really, really bad. And now that got me thinking like, but... You know, these are people who spend all their time cooking and like they're good enough to reach that level in the first place, right? Because there's like stages of elimination. So how do you reach like the fourth round of an elimination uh, format and like cook inedible or like really bad food? And that's basically stress, right? These are all things that you know how to do. Like public speaking. Why do people freeze? It's the stress, right? It's the lot of eyes and it's there's so much to lose. And there's so much to gain. And that is kind of the debuff that you get from stress and high pressure. And so high expectation just really fucks with your life. And so again, uh, you may have a lot of different uh, personal reasons of why you have high expectations and why they're hard to remove. I understand that. And... Uh, if you want to talk a little bit more personally about that, I'm al I am always welcome to you to my Discord or um, email me at billy at julylifecoach.com and we can talk more. But for the purposes of this asynchronous video, um, I just need to tell you that you gotta live the reality that you have. And uh, high potential, um, you just have to see that nothing good comes out of it. 
unfortunately many people um in fact like the majority of the people live with that kind of high expectations until they're like uh, mid 30s and 40s and then they get severely burned out and they crash and they realize they need to live life a little bit differently in order to continue living in a joyful way and that's when they kind of get to re drop that high expectations and i would love it if you don't have to experience that because i'm trying to paint this grim picture for you right and am i being too pessimistic about that stuff well why is billy so pessimistic about this stuff because it's just what happens when you have expectations. It's just what happens when you have attachment. And that is why the three marks of existence that Buddha said, like, uh, is non-self, non-impermanence, uh, and suffering. Why? Because suffering is just something that happens actively every time you attach onto something, right? And so... In order to live a truly happy life, you have to let go of expectations. And I'm not asking you to be a monk, right? I'm not asking you to be like as Zen as like me or whatever. But at least high expectations is uh, something you can actively try to let go of.